Our next matchup happens to be Juan Tapia with a 9-3 record going up against Fernando Garcia. For Juan Tapia, just to go ahead and dive into his specifics, he is 27 years of age from Brownsville, Texas. He has lost two of his last three. His most notable adversary happens to be Shakur Stevenson, but he did take Shakur Stevenson the distance, eight rounds. Yes, he did take the pain there. Tapia needs a win. Uh, Garcia also, I mean, these guys are a little bit, uh, want to show that they're still top prospects. And uh, a big fight for both of these kids here. And Fernando Garcia currently in the ring as he prepares for his matchup against Juan Tapia. He's coming off of a win over Angel Carvajal. Both fighters are set and ready to go for the official introductions. Here is our ring announcer, Miguel Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues here at AT&T Stadium. Brought to you by TGE Promotions, Man Down Promotions, DSG Promotions, and Fox Sports. Sponsored by proper number 12, Irish Whiskey. The finest, the tastiest, the smoothest liquid gold in the world. And O'Reilly Auto Parts. Order your parts online at O'ReillyAuto.com and get free curbside this next contest will be eight rounds of the Super Bantamweight Division. Introducing first in the red corner, wearing the black and gold, he weighed in at 123 pounds even. His record stands nine victories, three by knockout, opposite of three defeats. Fighting out of Brownsville, Texas, presenting Juan Liz Tapia. And his opponent across the ring. So Fernando Garcia and Juan Tapia matching up. 32 years of age for Fernando Garcia. He resides uh, in Dallas. He was born in Monterrey, Mexico. Oh yes, down south of the border now, residing here in Dallas. Fernando Garcia looking to make an impact here. And at 32 years of age, the time is now. We are underway and no touch of gloves from Fernando Ooh. Garcia. He has a streak. An, yeah, a little bit. He wants to go ahead and say, hey, listen, we are not friends. We are foes. Ray Flores, Felix De Jesus. We are less than three hours away. Don't forget, Spence Garcia, welterweight unification on the line. All you have to do, Fox Sports, BBC pay-per-view. Make sure to go ahead and order that on a variety of different platforms, your local cable or satellite systems, or also www.foxsports.com slash PPV. A little height advantage there for Garcia. He's 5'8", Tapia 5'5", about three inches. Well, in his last appearance here at at t Stadium against Marlon Olay, he loved to engage on the inside. So I think it's only a matter of time, Felix, before Garcia avoids using his height and his reach and wants to mix it up and throw a lot of punches. Yeah, vicious body sharp put uh, Marlon down, and he won that fight in five rounds. On the undercard of Spence and Mikey Garcia that happened last March 16 in front of nearly 50,000 fans. And we'd love to have that amount of people in this immaculate building of AT&T Stadium. But COVID-19 restrictions, limited fans are in attendance. Nice body shot there by Fernando Garcia. He's looking, he's protecting himself a little bit there, Tapia. Body shot does stun him there. Tell you what, Juan Tapia looks a little bit bigger physically up top, and now he's coming forward. Looks in very good shape. I actually saw him this morning, and he seemed very relaxed and confident at Juan Tapia. He said, this is my moment. Really staring into him. Well, his eyes certainly are transfixed on Fernando Garcia. They separate the two. Under a minute to go here on our opening stanza. Don't forget prelims coming up on FS2. 
in less than an hour. Vito Malnicki Jr., who is incidentally trained by legendary trainer Joe Goosen. This will be their first fight together, so looking forward to seeing this new partnership with Vito Malnicki Jr. and Joe Goosen. Uh, Goosen does, doesn't just take anybody, so uh, he must see something in this kid. Had lunch with Joe earlier today. He goes, I'm busier now than what I ever have been in my career. <laughs> Under 30 seconds to go in this first round. Fernando Garcia won Tapia. They're mixing it up pretty well here in the first round. Well, look, let's be honest, Felix. The two Mexican fighters, they love to mix it up. We're here at AT&T Stadium in Texas. Come on. <laughs> Styles make fights. It was bound to happen. Oh, you know it. Good right hand there by Juan Tapia. And speaking of fighters of Mexican descent, we will have Eduardo Ramirez, Miguel Flores, to begin the night on pay-per-view, and then we transition to Josecito Lopez, Francisco Santana, and then Sebastian Fundora at six feet, six inches tall. He'll match up against the Ghanaian and Habib Ahmed. You mentioned that's gonna be a war, Lopez and Santana. Listen, I, I can't wait for that I, I There is no way, in my opinion, that that cannot produce fireworks. Besides that, Spence that, and Garcia, that's the one you're looking for? I mean, look, Spence Garcia, obviously. I'm looking forward to all the fights, but I have a special place in my heart for that kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe combat that I think we're going to see. So sign me up for that, <laughs> Felix. Uh, that's going to be a good that one. That is how amped up I am. And now we go over to the other corner with... Fernando Garcia. I believe Derek James there is in his corner. Derek James is a busy man. He has the first two fights here, and then he will be in the corner of Errol Spence Jr. as his welterweight champion of the world will put two of his titles on the line against the Philadelphia native in Danny Garcia. Good round for Tapia, that first round. Let's see if he can keep going. Both have been busy. Now, speaking of busy, Danny Garcia, he said that he needs to be busier in the early going against Errol Spence Jr. in order to gain the victory. And I think he will. I think he will. He knows this is basically his last opportunity, and uh, we're waiting for a great fight tonight. Well, he's looking for that signature win at 147. It has been something that has eluded him, and can he go ahead and obtain it tonight against Errol Spence Jr.? We'll find out later tonight on Fox Sports BBC pay-per-view. But Fernando Garcia coming forward. He tagged him there with that jab. Yeah, it was very nice as Tapia was just moving backwards. He's trying to set up that overhand right as Tapia. It's like a laser right hand, but he just got tagged with the right hand from Garcia. Ray Flores, Felix De Jesus. Less than three hours away until Spence Garcia comes away on pay-per-view. And now Tapia going forward and unloading upon Fernando Garcia. Nice combination there by Tapia, which we did not see in his last couple of fights. No. He's letting his hands go a little bit more as we are coming up on the halfway mark of the second. None of these fighters has ever been knocked out, so we don't expect that tonight. It has to be something significant to be able to finish off the other. Good stiff jab there by Juan Tapia. Doubles up with that left hook. Starting to see the face of Fernando Garcia starting to redden from those jabs, compliments of Juan Tapia. Yeah, Tapia connecting at will right now. Garcia's hanging tough there. Under a minute to go here in this second stanza. Oh, look There's at that There's a exchange. nice uppercut there. If you think this is something, wait until Josecito <laughs> Lopez and Francisco Santana, wait until Spence Garcia start mixing it up. It's just a little taste. It's a small sample size, an appetizer, as I like to say. Oh. They're nice really going at it here. It's a nice fight. This card is stacked from top to bottom. We got to give credit to Tom Brown, the promoter of TGB Promotions, for making these fights, putting these fights together. I think Tom Brown, without question, is one of the smartest minds that has ever been gracious enough to lend his professional career to boxing. The best fighting the best. Oh, no question about it. Final moments of this, our second round. Nice right hand there by Juan Tapia. But back comes Garcia. Oh, nice exchange there at the end by Tapia. Coming strong. 
They both, Tapia was thrown in a machine gun-like burst to end the second. The fight that I, besides, of course, Spence and Garcia is Fundora. This kid is moving up, uh, now starting to fight the big boys. Let's take a look at some of the action, Felix, from the second, then we'll get back to Sebastian yeah. Fundora. There we go, the exchange. Tapia trying to get something in there there, but it was Garcia, and then he finally started wailing away and connecting at will against Garcia, so these guys are going at it. Well, you pointed out about Sebastian Fundora, he stands six feet, six inches tall, coming off of a win on October, or on August 22nd, over Nate Gallimore, became the first man and only man to stop Nate Gallimore, so that just goes to show you that Sebastian Fundora certainly has a high ceiling, and also, Samson Lukowitz is the same guy who found Manny Pacquiao, Sergio Martinez, David Benavides, and he found Sebastian Fundora. Samson Lukowitz told me Fundora is going to become a world champion. He told me that when David Benavidez made his national television debut back in early November of 2015, two years later, Benavidez became a world champion. Wow, well, he has to get through a bet today. But if Sansom says it, then it's uh, probably going to be true. Yeah. Certainly he will have his hands full, though, against Habib Ahmed. That is our co-main event and also happens to be a WBC Super Welterweight Eliminator matchup. So the winner will likely punch their ticket to a title shot down the line, but we are here in round three. These are super bantamweights matching up. Fernando Garcia, who has a record of 13 and two with eight knockouts, taking on Juan Tapia. Juan Tapia with a nine and three record. Neither man has been stopped, as you alluded to earlier in the telecast, Felix. Yeah, and uh, I like the way Tapia started. He usually starts a little slower than this. But, oh my God, he's really going at it. Yeah, a nice left hook followed by a right. He's starting to back up Fernando Garcia. Garcia's gonna have to meet him with some resistance at some point, Felix. Yes, if uh, keeps going this way, it's gonna favor Tapia this fight. <laughs> Tapia, his eyes just open up and he's able to, I mean, I don't know how he does that, but he really has such a keen eye <laughs> looking at his opponents. That's a good look, huh? Yeah, literally, it's like his <laughs> eyes expand. I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> Especially when you get hit, I mean, you know, you're supposed to lower a little bit that stare, but not, not in Tapia's case. <laughs> not at all. Halfway point of the third. Don't forget Spence Garcia coming your way. Nine Eastern, six Pacific time, four outstanding matchups. Make sure to join us wherever you are around the world. Fox Sports, BBC pay-per-view, your local cable or satellite systems, or also foxsports.com slash PPV. There's a right hand that connects for Tapia. You mentioned he lost against Shakur Stevenson, of course, with the elite competition. With so if he gets a victory tonight, back on top. It certainly puts him on upward movement. As you saw Tapia, he lost to Shakur Stevenson back on February 16, 2018. So almost three years ago. As they will separate the two. Don't forget, follow us on social media at BBC on Fox, also at Premier Boxing. Use the hashtag Spence Garcia all night long to partake in the social media conversation. Happy holidays to all of you and your families. As we deal with COVID 19, we wish all of you a safe and wonderful holiday season. And a little bit of an early holiday treat with this outstanding night of boxing, Felix. Oh, definitely. Well, three rounds. The action has been good. Oh. Top both with a nice right hand. They both connect. And that ends the third. To the fourth we go. They're both exchanging there, but Tapia looks to have a little more heavy punches going in than uh, Garcia right now. Oh, certainly. Also, Felix, when it comes to Spence Garcia, I think it is so fitting that we're here at AT&T Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys. Errol Spence is a lifelong Dallas Cowboys fan. Danny Garcia from Philadelphia, the great fighting city of brotherly love. He's a hardcore Eagles fan. So we have an NFC East showdown, but in the boxing ring tonight. Are the Giants still in first place in that division? Uh, that I don't know. I mean, like a four and seven I mean, or something I mean, gets I mean, you first place. Listen, my Bears aren't doing too well, but that's just a terrible division. Yeah. But what I will say, Angel Garcia 
informed me that he goes, we're going to go to Dallas and we're going to sit on the Cowboys helmet, much like Terrell Owens did years ago. Oh, wow. So Angel Garcia, the father of Danny Garcia, certainly no stranger to lending his opinion. He's very outspoken. Oh, I mean, look, you got to love that. He's someone that believes in his son. Yes. And they know they can get the victory. But right now, Fernando Garcia trying to pick up the pace against Juan Tapia. Nice right hand to the body. Tapia shrugs it off. So Garcia started this fourth round, a little more movement. But I think Tapia still has a little something left for him in this fourth round. They both exchange on the inside now. Ray Flores, Felix De Jesus, privileged to be here at AT&T Stadium here in Arlington, Texas. We are here in the Dallas area. This wonderful venue, this is the fifth prize fight that has taken place here at AT&T Stadium. Second straight appearance for Errol Spence at AT&T Stadium. He had Mikey Garcia last year in March, followed it up with a win over Sean Porter Staples Center. Fernando Garcia coming forward against Juan Tapia. Yeah, here we go. Now Tapia starts his attack. At that first half, he let Garcia see what he had, and now he's attacking. You mentioned Garcia Spence, that last fight. Garcia maybe not a real Walter White, but now he's fighting somebody in Danny Garcia who's very used to this weight. We're talking about Danny Garcia's last opponent and Ivan Redcatch. They fought at Barclays Center. A couple of big right hands for Juan Tapia as he comes forward. Ivan Redcatch took Danny Garcia the distance, but that was a stay busy fight for Danny. And now Fernando Garcia is backing up Juan Tapia. Hey, they've been going at it. Their ebbs and flows action here in this. Really our important fourth to this fight. Well, they fight here at 122. And 122 from a PPC standpoint is absolutely loaded when you have the likes of Luis Neri. You also have Brandon Figueroa, just to name a few. Oh, great fighters. Oh, yeah, excellent fighters. And along with, you know, Angelo Leo as well, Stephen Fulton, they're likely headed towards a collision course. Stephen Fulton came down with COVID-19, but Leo picked up the vacant championship. There we go. Now he starts his attack here, Tapia. It's like he knows how much is left in the round. There's a right hand that connects on the side of the head by Garcia, but back comes Tapia. This is a good fight to get people wrapped up for the FS2 prelims. There's a right hand that backed up Garcia. These two guys are letting the leather fly early. They are. So you're getting a couple of fights on FS2 and then the pay-per-view. What a night. After this, you have seven total fights, three fights on the FS2 prelims coming up at the top of the hour, and then the four-fight pay-per-view. That ends the fourth. We're halfway home. Both in the corner here. And this team spins in the corner, Fernando Garcia. Really getting worked at. Oh, absolutely. You can see that uh, right eye. Mike Rodriguez, the outstanding cut man, they're working on the eye, the right eye of Fernando Garcia. Mike Rodriguez, who's been there with some top level fighters, Julian Williams, Showtime, Sean Porter, as well as a cut man. Yeah, Mike's been in the big fights, huh? He has, and he continues to grow and blossom as one of the prominent cut men in all of boxing. Now, Tapia looks ready. He's not even breathing hard. You saw Garcia in the corner. He looked a little more, breathing a little more deeply. So let's see what this fifth round gives us. Ray Flores, Felix De Jesus, AT&T Stadium. Just over two and a half hours away until we go live on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. This is a super bantamweight bout scheduled for eight. A couple good right hands down the center starting off the action for Garcia. He's looking to land that right. Tapia is, oh, but Garcia with that nice jab. He's keeping him away. He's trying to set up that left hook. That left hook ever so present in the arsenal of Danny Swift Garcia which he used to finish off Eric Morales. He clipped Amir Khan with it as well. Morales is gazing like he was spinning after that punch. Literally. 
Danny Garcia actually won his first world title in nearby Houston back in 2012. And that was before Errol Spence turned professional. I remember when he was in that undercard, uh, Garcia Matisse. Nobody gave him a chance against Matisse. Well, Adrian Garcia's father was so confident that he put his hair on the line in that fight, and Danny was a significant underdog, and Danny would go, and literally, he busted up Lucas Matisse and actually hurt his eye at one point in the fight. And that happened today? We'll see. We'll find out later tonight with Errol Spence and Danny Garcia. Good right hand down the center. By Fernando Garcia, we're coming up on the halfway point of the fifth. But for those first couple of rounds that Garcia was just trying to hold on, but you know he's really come back in this fight. So I think the the theme in this fight is punches and bunches because neither man is reluctant to throw whatsoever, Felix. Yes, they are going at it. You see that they're in the center of the ring. That's what you can expect for a lot of the night with Miguel Flores, Eduardo Ramirez, obviously Lopez and Santana. Sebastian Fundora likes to fight in phone booths pretty much. He'll do that against Habib Ahmed and then Spence Garcia in our main event. Hey, you figure Fundora 6'6", six, six, he would stay away. No, he likes it inside. I asked him if he if, his, if he drives his father nuts, Freddy Fundora. He goes, yeah, you know, sometimes he does. But uh, I like to fight on the inside because that just that's where I'm comfortable at. And he's strong on his legs. You see his legs? Oh, he's skinny. No, he, he's strong. No, he does. He gets a lot of good leverage behind his shots, does Sebastian Fundore. He's 15-0-1. His only draw, his only blemish came to Jamonte Clark over a year ago in Minneapolis. We were there. That was back on August 31st. That was Labor Day weekend in, at the Armory. Mm. Final moments of the fifth round between Fernando Garcia and Juan Tapia. Really been an entertaining fight. It's been a, a physical fight as well, Phoenix. Nope. They're not backing down. Nope. Not one iota. <laughs> oh, and that ends the fifth. They both fight to the back. So the minutes keep dropping as Spence and Garcia is getting closer and closer. Two and a half hours away until we hit the air with the pay-per-view. People are starting to trickle in now. Yeah, 16,000 fans expected. This place fits about 100,000 last year. Without COVID-19, we had nearly 50,000 for Errol Spence and Mikey Garcia. And would you believe that Errol Spence is joining Manny Pacquiao as being the only two prize fighters to headline multiple times here at AT&T Stadium. Wow, nice little stat there. And when it comes to possibly seeing the future, hopefully COVID-19 is behind us. Derek James told me this. What about if Spence defeats Danny Garcia? That's a big if. What about Spence, Manny Pacquiao, AT&T Stadium, COVID behind us? How many people do you think that would fit? Uh, I don't I think people will be outside <laughs> trying to get tickets. Probably over 80,000. Round number six, this one is scheduled for eight. Juan Tapia coming out starting strong here in the Super Bantamweight affair against Fernando Garcia. Tapia with the 93 record. Garcia 13 and two on his dossier. I'm not sure Danny Garcia is going to put a wrench to that, uh, those plans. Well, look, Danny Garcia is a pro's pro. Always comes in shape, always comes ready to go. Narrow loss at the hands of Keith Thurman. Close loss against Sean Porter. Good left hooks oh. by Fernando Garcia. Yeah. Tapia tries to come back with a right, trying to keep him away. He just has to start early. Danny does. Oh, no question. There's some blood on the nose of... Uh, Garcia, by the way. Right there on the, the bridge of the nose. They got the swelling down. Good job by Mike Rodriguez to be able to handle that swelling from the right eye. There's a big oh. right hand. It buckled the knees yeah. of Fernando Garcia. Juan Tapia blasted him right on the chin. And Garcia trying to hold on. Good. Time for Tapia to attack. He feels that he's hurt. That's why he's coming forward even more so with the fervor. He has to be careful that he doesn't get caught with a nice left here by Garcia. But he's definitely trying to break him down, is Tapia. This is the second time that Premier Boxing Champions has been here at AT&T Stadium. And what a magnificent venue. One of my favorite venues for prize fights. 
That's why Spence loves it here. Oh, I mean, <laughs> Jerry Jones loves him. <laughs> Errol Spence, he was a guest here a few weeks ago for the Dallas Cowboys. He was honored. They showed him on the big screen. Big right hand by Fernando Garcia. Well, Garcia showing quite a chin, Felix. Yes. He got lit up with the right hand at close distance and then comes back and retaliates and fires a shot of his own. These shots at Tapia is landing here. Would have had a couple of boxers down, but not Garcia. They both have that will of a warrior, that warrior spirit. As we approach the final 30 seconds of the sixth round, this one is scheduled for eight. Garcia could have used his height advantage in this fight, but he just decided to slug it out here with uh, Tapia. Well, it's something that we kind of thought might be the case just based on his previous history. Not backing down, going after Tapia. What is that song by Tom Petty? No, I won't back down. I'm not going to sing anymore. So. <laughs> I think you're better as a play by play. I one. think so. <laughs> Final moments of the sixth. Don't forget Spets Garcia on pay per view tonight. On to the seventh, we go. <laughs> Don't leave your day job. <laughs> yeah, no question about it. I'll leave the singing to my father. So. <laughs> Oh, Tuffy looks a little more tired this round. After he was nice and fresh starting this round. Uh, Garcia got to him. Well, they've expended quite a bit of energy, Felix. This is a great fight. Both of them know the importance of just uh, being relevant with a win here tonight. Here's James. Yeah, there's a busy man, Derek James, in the corner of Fernando Garcia. Be careful, he told him, be careful, be careful with that right. You saw that Derek James, he had Frank Smith in the, uh, not Frank Smith, beg your pardon on that one, Frank Martin. He was victorious in our opening prelim matchup. And now again, Derek James has Fernando Garcia and he has Errol Spence later tonight. Yeah, he has three elite fighters, at least Martin and Spence are. You know, Fernando Garcia is trying to go ahead and show that those two losses last year were pretty much where he wasn't focused, and now he feels like he has things together. That's the case so far in this fight. Tapia's thrown a lot at him, and he's handled it. Got to love that overhead shot here at AT&T Stadium. Fernando Garcia and... Juan Tapia matching up. Felix, this is why I like the lighter weight classes as well, because the super bantamweights and featherweights, they, they are so exciting, and they love to throw caution to the wind. Yes, I, I agree. They, they just go. Go at it, like we're seeing right here between Garcia and Tapia. And you mentioned those screens. It's beautiful. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, I think this is a magnificent... I've been here for several uh, Dallas Cowboy games in entertainment. And I got to tell you, this place is just top notch. It is a first class entertainment facility, is AT&T Stadium. A facility fitting for a matchup like Spence Garcia. But right now, Juan Tapia, Fernando Garcia, they are mixing it up on the inside. These two super bantamweights, 122 pounds. They are not shying away from throwing tons of punches. I wonder when these other guys from the undercard see, uh, or get on, get in the ring, see how huge this place is, what their reaction is going to be. You know what I love about this too, Felix, as we are just over the halfway point of the seventh, is that every single fight on this card is being televised. You are not missing not one fight on this card. That's great. For the boxing fan, that is great. You get every single fight. Transition over to FS2 coming up in 23 minutes, and then the pay-per-view in just over two hours. Fox Sports, BBC pay-per-view. Call your local cable or satellite systems, or go to foxsports.com slash PPV. And you can order it right now. You don't have to wait. Yeah, wh why are you going to wait? Make sure to order it now, and then start to order what you're going to get food-wise. I was home. Give me a deep dish pizza in Chicago and then some chicken wings. That'd be my choice. What yeah. about you, Felix? Uh, about the same. Cannot go wrong with that. <laughs> pizza. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice exchange there by Garcia. Well, these guys are in oh. such great shape. They haven't been eating much pizza, but they are certainly letting 
Haymakers go, and they're throwing power punches in abundance. Everybody delivers nowadays, too, so. You can deliver it in the palm of your hand. I love it. There's a right hand that caught the jaw of. Oh, Garcia is amazing. He's, he just came back in this fight. I think he was trailing early, and then he just started hitting Tapia. He's unrelenting. Is Fernando Garcia one more round remaining? These guys are definitely giving a show tonight. They deserve uh, some proper 12 Irish whiskey after their dinner. Afterwards. <laughs> I would say so. The presenting sponsor tonight. Uh, cut of the bridge of the nose of Fernando Garcia, who's training under the gun. It's a Derek James. Did you give Toppy a, a little edge so far in this fight? I would say so. I think he's been a little bit more active in, in certain aspects, especially in the early going. So. Garcia. But Fernando Garcia is coming on. Yeah, he's coming on. I think so, definitely. So we'll see. I mean, if he has a good showing in this eighth and last round, he might take the fight. We'll see what the judges will say. Absolutely. Eighth and final round between Fernando Garcia and Juan Tapia. This is a matchup here at 122. Ray Flores, Felix De Jesus here at AT&T Stadium. Coming up, Spence Garcia in uh, just over two hours on Fox Sports BBC pay-per-view. Also want to thank the fine staffs with Fox Sports, TGB Promotions, DSG Promotions, Man Down Promotions, along with the Life in Motion Group for putting us in the bubble, taking care of all the athletes, making sure we're tested, and keeping everybody safe and sound during these rather difficult times of COVID-19. Definitely, Ray, great job, and especially the crew here, Michael Janklovitz, Andrew Nelson, Daniela, Zachary Kinman, of course, and B. Stanford. Oh, absolutely. They do a wonderful job. Uh, so special hello to the Vice President of TGB Promotions, Brittany Goosen Brown, who does so much for a variety of us. As we are 45 seconds in, nice right hand by Juan Tapia, and they both are mixing it up. These are, they're slugging it right now. What a hard here by Garcia, because those were really haymakers there by Tapia. These two fighters are setting the table for what is going to be a tremendous night of boxing. This is what the uh, Santana Josito Lopez fight might look like. I think you're probably right. That's a fight I've been looking forward to for a long, long time, Peter. <laughs> it's finally a promise. hardcore fight fans fight. And look at Juan Tapia go, though. And again with his... He opens up his eyes wide to look at the target of Fernando Garcia, and he clips him with the left hook, and then he eats a right cross. Well, due to their fighting skills, it looks like they're not going to go down. They're going to finish uh, this eight-rounder. What fighters. Incredible, huh? You see some uh, jokers sometimes there get into the ring, and uh, real boxing is no joke. Oh, no doubt about it. You don't play boxing. That's a fact. That's why I say this is with Spence Garcia. It's an NFC East showdown, though, but with fists and gloves yeah. in a prize fight. Final moments as we are under a minute to go in this eighth and final round. A very entertaining matchup. Neither man wants to stop throwing punches, Felix. No. They know the importance there. Tapia coming back. This might be crucial these last 35 seconds on who gets the fight. He's able to sway the judges. The judges for our main event tonight, Tim Cheatham, Barry Lindemann, and Steve Weisfeld. Referee in charge will be Thomas Taylor for Errol Spence and Danny Garcia. So quality judges involved in our main event, Felix. Quality fight, quality judges, quality night here at the at &T. And I hope all of you have a comfortable and a quality couch as they swing and they fight to the bell. Fernando Garcia, wow. Juan Tapia unloading upon one another. And that ends the fight. That was a fun deferred, matchup. Yeah. Both deserve praises here. They went at it. That will be up to the judges. I would hate to be a judge in this particular fight. Although I give the edge to Juan Tapia. Juan started a little uh, earlier, first two or three rounds. Looked like Garcia was in trouble. Then Garcia came back. So uh, let's see what the judges have to say. 
listen, even though Juan Tapia only has a 25% knockout percentage, he did have power and he did sting Fernando Garcia over the course of the fight. Yes, he definitely did. At the end, uh, here we're seeing some more punches heavily landed by Tapia, but Garcia was holding on. That was, a, that was probably his best punch of the fight, that right hand that came yeah. forward, boom, buckled his knees. Did fit on the Garcia, but Garcia did not go away and was right on top of him. That probably was the difference between Spence and Porter, that little buckle that we saw oh, in that yeah. fight. So. Yeah, uh, Sean Porter almost did the stinky leg a little bit, but he didn't, you know? You have quality fighters like we're going to see tonight, Spence and Garcia. One punch can make a difference. Anything can happen. And there you see the end of the fight. Both men went to battle, going toe to toe during points of the fight. And my brother Miguel Flores, we await the decision. And also want to thank the Texas State Department of Licensing and Regulation, Jim Erickson, the entire crew. They do a wonderful job and they are doing an exceptional job of overseeing these events and keeping the athletes safe as well. Yes, they do. Tough times. Uh, they're doing the right thing. So I believe Miguel Flores has the scorecard as to who is going to take home this victory. And now we send it up with the official decision here is Miguel Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Javier. He gets the W. Kudos for Garcia. He came up, uh, showed up for this fight. But Tapia did have the better of it. And uh, congratulations to Tapia. So Juan Tapia takes home the W.